Yo, it's your boy Stroke back in the Madden video. Today we're going to be rebuilding the Miami Dolphins and we're going to do it with a catch. We're going to do it without Tua Tagovailoa. Obviously in the Thursday night football game, he suffered another concussion and just one of the many concussions he's had in his very young NFL career. And like football aside and favorite team and stuff like that, Tua should honestly retire. If we're talking about like his mental health and him caring for his family, he should really retire because this is this is actually becoming very serious. And I get he probably loves football, but he could still he could still do something in football in the football community. He can still be a coach maybe later down the road, or maybe he could be an I don't know an owner because I don't know if he'll have enough money, but he could be a general manager, something like that. Seriously, for his safety, he should probably retire because this is too many concussions and he's going to have severe CTE and he doesn't want to end up like Antonio Brown. So let's start the rebuild with getting Gardner Minshew from the Las Vegas Raiders. Obviously, it's hard trying to get a good quarterback from a team because they're not just going to trade you a good quarterback. So we gave up Emmanuel Agba, Jeff Wilson Jr., fifth-round pick. We got a serviceable quarterback to fill in for Tua because he's not going to be on the team. We uh, just basically got rid of him because we're going to act like he retired. First year, we finished 9-8. and eight. We don't quite make the playoffs. That's kind of understandable since, you know, we didn't have our quarterback. Kind of thought we might have snuck into a playoff spot, though, because we do have a good roster around us. We still have Tyreek Hill, Jalen Waddle, Raheem Mostert, Devon Achen. So let's go ahead and check the stats and see how we did. I f I'm, I still feel like they're going to do great, but um, I don't. obviously I'm expecting a drop-off since we didn't have our starting quarterback. Gardner Minshew... Honestly, Gardner Minshew could easily do better than this. 3,941 passing yards, 23 passing touchdowns, 17 interceptions. Let's go and check the rushing. Raheem Mostert, 577 yards, 8 rushing touchdowns. He averaged 3.6 yards a carry. Devon Achan, 343 yards, 4 rushing touchdowns. Devon Achan is definitely going to be finishing better than that. Gardner Minshew ran the ball quite a bit. 269 yards and a rushing touchdown. Tyreek Hill, he got 1,334 yards, nine receiving touchdowns. Jalen Waddle, 875 yards. He got a receiving touchdown, only one receiving touchdown for Jalen Waddle. Braxton Berrios, five receiving touchdowns with 766 yards. And Jonu Smith, 545 yards and a touchdown. Devon Achan, 261 yards receiving with two receiving touchdowns. Leader in tackles with only 79 tackles with Jordan Poyer and Jordan Brooks. Kenan Fuller and Jalen Ramsey right behind them. Tackles for loss. It's Clayus Campbell. Clayus Campbell's good, but he is very old, so I'm shocked he's that still impactful. And he was also the leader in sacks with eight. Jalen Phillips and Zach Sealer were right behind him. Jordan Brooks led the team in interceptions with five. Then we got Kenan Fuller, Jordan Poyer, Jalen Ramsey, Marcus May, Anthony Walker. So these are the people we drafted, and we had the 17th pick, and I drafted Jalen Milrow, obviously the quarterback out of Alabama, pretty familiar name, I feel like most people know him. Hope he does good. He was probably the best quarterback available, and we obviously needed one in the first round because we're going to need a franchise quarterback. I like Gardner Minshew. He's not bad, but he's definitely not a franchise quarterback. Then we got a right guard, right end, right outside linebacker, then a defensive tackle, and a wide receiver. So hopefully Jalen Murrow will turn it around for us because this is a great team. We can still contend. And the first year from Jalen Murrow, we finished 4-13. and So not off to a great start with Jalen Murrow era. Let's go and check his stats. Ooh, that is not that great. 4,180 yards. The yards is not bad. But it's the touchdown and interceptions ratio. Only 20 touchdowns with 22 interceptions. HN, leading rusher, 442 yards, eight, er, eight rushing touchdowns. Jalen Milrow, 267 yards, 
one rushing touchdown. And then it looks like Jalen Wright had two 200 yards with two rushing touchdowns. Tyreek Hill, 1,391 yards, five receiving touchdowns, a little bit less touchdowns for Tyreek Hill than he had last year. Jalen Waddle with three receiving touchdowns. John U. Smith with three receiving touchdowns as well. Malik Washington with six off of 651 yards. Let's go and see who the leaders and tackles were. Jordan Brooks, then Bradley Chubb, Kenan Fuller. They were in Javon Holland. Javon Holland's actually really underrated, to be honest. Tugs for loss, it was Bradley Chubb, then Zach Sealer, then Jordan Brooks. Sacks, it was Zach Sealer, Bradley Chubb. And these are the players we're going to be losing this year. We're going to be losing Javon Holland. I mean, I, I want him, but he has just no interest in signing with us at all. We're going to be losing Gardner Minshew as well with Kendall, Kendall Fuller. We're going to be losing Ethan Booner, Mikael Walker, Skylar Thompson. I don't think Skylar Thompson's that good, to be honest. Like I, In real life, I think the Dolphins should go ahead and get someone else to play these upcoming games that two is going to be missing. But yeah, these are all the people we're going to be missing. And then Jerome Ford is a... Per- this is our free agency, so this is the people we signed. Jerome Ford, Jay Cameron, Karamata, the punter. We just need a punter. Nate Davis, we need a right guard. Jalen Tolbert, we need some depth at receiver. Defensive tackle, we def- definitely need... We got a right end and a tight end as well. We do need a tight end in general. Right end, we just need a little bit more depth on defense. Our defense is not bad, but it needs more depth, especially up front. Uh, that's also why we got Grover Stewart as well. These are the people we drafted. So after the first year, I do auto generated because no one knows the people after that, unless you're like a diehard college football fan. No one knows the people after the first year. So I do auto-drafted, and we had the first pick, and we got Sidney Cohen. He is a right end, then we drafted a tight end, then we a cornerback in the third, and then a cornerback also in the fourth, receiver in the fifth, middle linebacker in the sixth, and a free safety. So hopefully Cohen uh, lives up to the potential because he was the first overall pick, and we desperately need it. We need to turn this around because when we have people like Tyreek Hill – in our lineup, we are basically guaranteed contenders. And we do make playoffs. This is our first time making playoffs in this simulation. We are going against the Pittsburgh Steelers in the wild card. Hopefully we are able to win because we're definitely definitely capable of going deep. And I'm interested to see what the stats are looking like if we made the playoffs. Shayla Monroe, 3,809 yards. 21 passing touchdowns and 10 interceptions. The ratio is a lot better, but still, 21 passing touchdowns is not a lot. Devon Hn was the leading rusher with 905 yards. Looks like he had 8 rushing touchdowns. Jalen Milrow, he ran the ball pretty well. 366 yards with 2 rushing touchdowns. Even Tyreek Hill had 15 attempts, and he had a rushing touchdown as well. Tyreek Hill, 1,329 yards. Receiving with 12 receiving touchdowns. Jalen Waddle, two receiving touchdowns with 929 yards. Luke Musgrave, 544 yards with two receiving touchdowns. Jalen Tur- Tolbert, he had a receiving touchdown as well. And the people leading us in tackles in our first playoff year was Chop Robinson. Jordan Brooks was up there. Then Zach Sealer was up there for tackles for loss. Bradley Chubb, Jalen Phillips, and Zach Sealer's for the sacks. Interceptions, we got quite a bit of names up there. We got Jalen Ramsey, Bradley Chubb, Jalen Phillips. And we lose in the first round. We were first round exits. We lose by a point to the Pittsburgh Steelers. And the Pittsburgh Steelers were the second seed. And we were the seventh, oddly enough. I don't think many people would have predicted the Steelers being the second seed before the Miami Dolphins being the seventh. But also, we did lose Tua. And, you know, you just got to feel bad for Tua. Like, you really do have to feel bad for him. These are the people we're losing. Jordan Brooks, Zach Sealer, not really a whole lot of re-sign interest. And also, Zach Sealer is also regressing. We're losing Grover Stewart. We had him for only a year, I believe. Uh, Dick Dito, 
And we will also be losing Cam Smith as well. So hopefully we can address those in free agency. And we got our first big signing. A 92 overall, Derek Stingley, Jalen Ramsey. He is getting a little old and he's going to start regressing. So we do need a cornerback. We desperately do need a cornerback. We got Derek Stingley Jr. 92 overall, only 26 years old. And we got also Marcus Williams in free safety. And we needed a backup quarterback behind Jalen Burrow, Tyler Hudley. Now, Jalen Murrow did impress me more with this season, but this auto-generated QB, he was by far the best available, so I'm at least going to keep him or Jalen Murrow seeing what I can get for each one of them. Anyway, Eddie Krueger, he is a Miami Dolphin now, and we also got a tight end just in case we need more depth there, and we kind of do, to be honest, because it's not like Luke Musgrave is young. And we also got a middle linebacker and a defensive tackle, left tackle, a defensive tackle again, and a running back. And we're going to trade Jalen Monroe for Mason Graham straight up. So I'm, maybe I could have got a little bit more just because of the position Jalen Monroe is. Obviously, quarterback is more valuable than defensive tackle. We desperately do need defensive tackle, though. And Mason Graham is a stud. He's already an 88 overall. Jalen Monroe. Yes, we did just make the playoffs, but in those two seasons, he didn't do good. Even this last season, it wasn't great. And we go 0-17. 0-17, guys. So we didn't win a single game, and I can't help but feel responsible for it because I got rid of Jalen Miro for Eddie Krueger, the rookie quarterback. But when I go into look, they, even though I put Eddie Krueger in the depth chart, and I put Tyler Huntley right behind him. Madden decides it to be a horrible game. And they didn't play them. So you know what that tells me? It tells me the kicker was probably playing as quarterback. Because look, we still have receiving stats. Jalen Tolbert, Tyreek Hill, and Jalen Waddle All still up there. Seven receiving touchdowns for Tyreek Hill. But... And the kicker was probably throwing to him because that's your always that's always your emergency quarterback. So Madden is pretty trash, and I guess it's not a huge deal, but it's pretty annoying, especially when I'm trying to do a rebuild. Mason Graham anyway got six point five sacks. Jalen Wright, his resign interest is high, but we already got a Chan, and yeah, he is a good backup. But we also got Jerome Ford. We got Jerome Ford for very cheap. So these are some of the names we will be losing. Jason Sanders, Alec Ingold, our full our fullback and our kicker. But yeah, I just still can't believe they put our kicker in. Uh Jason Sanders, or it was probably our punter. It was either one of the two. Anyway, we signed Jacoby Myers in free agency and Jamin Davis. We need left end. We do kind of need receiver a little bit, especially since Tyreek Hill will probably be retiring soon, to be honest. And we drafted Michael Sims with the number one overall pick. Uh, Auto-generated receiver. He looks really good. Then we also got a left tackle with C.J. Wake. And we also got Duffy as a left guard. We also got another receiver, Tommy Fields. Then we got a running back, Troy, Troy Rush. And then we got another receiver, Felix Green. And then we got a right tackle in Zach Watkins. Honestly, I didn't pick that receiver in the sixth round. It was auto-generated. Anyway, we're trying to make a trade here because we do need more depth. And our defense is honestly not not that great. So it needs some work. And we're giving them a first-round pick and two-thirds. And uh, Prince, I feel like that's an auto-generated rookie we took not that long ago. For Tremaine Edmonds, we're getting Bond and Tyreek Stevenson. So that will definitely help our defense. Our defense should be really good now. And we only finished 5-2. and two, And I don't even know how we finished 5-2. and two. I really don't. I really don't at all. That makes no sense to me. Because our team, our overall as a team, is like an... It's not bad at all. Anyway, Eddie Krueger, first year starting. Since Madden didn't let him start the first year for some reason. Four, th- or 3,665 passing yards, 24 passing touchdowns, 14 interceptions. That is a lot of interceptions, but it's, I mean, that's a good amount of passing touchdowns at least. And he ran the ball a good amount with 374 yards. Devon H. had 843 yards and eight rushing touchdowns. Jalen Waddle 
was the leader in yards. Okay, so this is the year Tyreek Hill does retire. So no more Tyreek Hill. Jalen Waddle was our leader. And then let's go out and check our defense. Al Bayer was a leader in tackles. Bond was second. And then Chop Robinson. Mason Graham was a leader in tackles for loss. Then Jalen Phillips. Then Jermaine Davis. Sacks was Chop Robinson. Then Mason Graham. Then Jamon Davis. Interceptions. Marcus Williams with three. Derek Stingley Jr. with two. Jalen Ramsey with two. Jalen Ramsey hasn't retired yet, but he is definitely going to start regressing. Tight end. We got Pat Faramu with the tight ends we drafted are just not panning out at all i think we ended up taking two in the start of this rebuild and they're just not panning out then we got tj watt because we do still need a little bit of hope on defense but i think this should definitely make our defense complete and we got a pair of Steelers right there so pat faramuth and tj watt are now miami dolphins we got venzel of richmond at free safety and then we got a right end in the fourth round then we got a left end then a middle linebacker and a quarterback. When I tell you guys that our defense does need work, it I am not like over exaggerating. Our offensive line's not even bad. Um, we have kept most of our offensive linemen so far in this rebuild because they're good and they want to stay with us. Anyway, we give up with a first round pick, 2030 first round pick for Trayvon Walker. And I just want to go all out since this will probably be the last season of the rebuild. I want to become as good as humanly possible, especially on the defense. So, and then we get up a second round pick for Davenport. Looks like an auto generated cornerback from the Miami Dol or from the New England Patriots going to the Miami Dolphins. And we only finished six and eleven. I don't understand how because if you guys see our overall right there, it is an eighty five across the board, eighty five overall, eighty five defense, eighty five offense. That is better than a good amount of teams in the league. So I don't understand. The simulation is not on our side at all. Eddie Krueger, let's see how we did. Oh, that's a horrible ratio. Even though he has a high overall, his overall is currently sitting at an 86. Uh, so if you're an 86 overall, why are you doing so horrible? Why are you doing 13 passing touchdowns with a seven interceptions? That's inexcusable. Devon H had a lot of rushing touchdowns for Devon H. He had 13 and 838 yards. Eddie Krueger, he had 402 rushing yards. Jalen Waddle, 986 receiving yards, six receiving touchdowns, two Receiving touchdowns for Michael Sims, the number one overall pick. Devon H. Eddie at 263 yards with zero touchdowns. Al Bayer was the leader in tackles again. Tremaine Emmett, then Jose Davenport, and Chop Robinson. Mason Graham was up there as well. Tuggins for loss. Mason Graham was the leader by far. And then Trayvon Walker. Sacks, Mason Graham. Only 5.5 is the leader for sacks. That's not great. And then interceptions, seven for Marcus Williams somehow. Marcus Williams got a big total of seven. Then Derek Stokely with three. Then Jose Davenport. Then Al Bayer with an interception as well. So that is the end of the rebuild. The simulation odds were just not in our favor at all. If you guys are interested in who won the Super Bowl during this, uh, the Vikings, the Atlanta Falcons, it looks like. Then the Kansas City Chiefs against the Falcons in 2027. Uh, Josh Allen with an MVP year. Then the Baltimore Ravens, so that's great. The Ravens are finally able to get a Super Bowl with Lamar Jackson. Then Kansas City again versus the Packers. And then 38-35 to against the Philadelphia Eagles. And that looks like a repeat because right there, 2023. And yeah, then look, 2024 is... 2024 is 35 to th or 35 to 38 with the Chiefs winning. And then when you go to it in 2022, that's exactly what it was. So that's kind of neat there. But yeah, that is the rebuild, guys. Make sure you guys leave a like and subscribe. It was greatly appreciated. These videos do take a little longer to make. So I would highly appreciate you guys just giving me some support with a like. Also, make sure you subscribe if you like Madden content or NFL content in general. But this is Miami Dolphins, again, talking about Tua. I know Dolphins fans don't want him to retire. And no one wants him to, no one really wants him to leave. But it's just for his safety. And honestly, he really should at least 
highly consider it. That is the end of the video. Make sure you guys leave a like and subscribe for more Madden 25 and NFL content. See you in the next video.